What's crack? Big dogs. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to headquarters. My name is Nicholas. This is BDGE. And as always, we are sponsored by Underdog. They have the absolute best pick'em games on their website. Animal actually smashed last night, hit the overs on just about everything. It's how you know. So you know who the bad gamblers are when they just pick overs on everything. They're the fun gamblers, but they're the bad gamblers. Go check out underdogfantasy.com for the best player prop pick'em games on there. They got fantasy points, they got rushing yards, receiving yards, touchdowns, all that good shit. We'll be doing picks throughout the week. So if you want to lose all your revenue, you come to me and you take my underdog picks. Underdogfantasy.com. If you deposit $10 on there, they're going to match that $10 if you use the promo code BDGE. So sign up with code BDGE on Underdog Fantasy. The link for the app will be right in the description and they will match that deposit bonus five wide receivers that y'all should be targeting on your waiver wire. It's a lot crispier at the wide receiver position this week than it was at the running back position. The running back waiver wire video already dropped today. So I will link that first thing in the description. If you missed it, let's fucking tuck our shirts in. Stop yelling. Let's eat. <laughs> No surprise here, but number one on this list is Rondell Moore of the Arizona Cardinals, man. And I want to get this point across early, and I want to get it across often. I am very much okay missing on rookie wide receivers in the draft, in your fantasy football drafts. As soon as they show a glimpse of usage, of production, of those things, you do not want to miss out on them. Like, very long gone are the days where rookie wide receivers are not producing for your fantasy lineups. They're one of the few types of players in fantasy where we don't actually know their usage yet. Okay. A lot of the times when we have these players that we already know that have busted year over year over year, and they have like a couple big games in the beginning of the year, we know who the, who they are as players already, but with rookie wide receivers, we're all guessing it's all a coin flip for all of these guys, basically. So when one of them starts to blow up, i.e. Justin Jefferson last year, i.e. T. Higgins, like all of these players, Chase Claypool, you don't want to be late. I'm okay missing on them in the drafts because they're the first guys that get cut. But as soon as you see positive usage spikes, as soon as you see production happening, you want to, you don't want to miss on them. You will regret missing on them on the waiver wire, okay? So Rondell Moore had his rookie debut in week one, five targets, four receptions, 68 yards on 26% of the snaps. Week two, we saw that snap percentage go up from 26 to 46%. And what did he do? Led the team. Eight targets, seven catches, 114 yards, and a touchdown. A lot of y'all saw his long receiving touchdown probably all over the, the highlights and whatnot this week, all over Bleacher Reports, corny ass Instagram feed. You saw it. Hard to unsee. Now, it's hard to grab more on the waiver wire because he's going to be going for a lot of money. And I suggest you drop a decent penny on him. He is my number one waiver wire ad this week out of all positions. And you should be using your number one waiver wire priority on him. Okay. It is important to keep in mind that uh, while he's, while he's blowing up a little bit right now, he's still playing the fewest snaps and running the fewest routes of the Cardinals receivers. You still have D hop, AJ green, Christian Kirk running more routes and just playing more than, than Rondell Moore is. However, the Cardinals are running four wide receiver sets at the single highest rate in the entire NFL. He is playing 85% from the slot. So he is a pure slot receiver right now. That's getting easy looks. And he is such an explosive athlete. This is why I love putting guys in the slot that are like this. Cause Rondell Moore, when you look at his athleticism, man, four, three, seven, 40 burst agility uh basically as elite as it comes he's simply too good of an athlete to keep off the field he's pretty much exactly what cliff wanted christian kirk to be and he got a second chance with it and now rondell moore is doing unbelievable things on the field uh the cardinals are sixth in neutral game script pace they have a high pace they're playing a lot of four wide receiver sets rondell moore is going to continue and continue and continue to eat i what, what i think is going to happen is Eventually, A.J. Green is going to become like a situational specialty type player, and you can't keep him out there for 90% of the snaps. There's just no fucking reason to. Uh, Rondell Moore, he keeps producing like this on, on such limited playtime. He's going to continue seeing more and more playtime. This offense is going to pass the ball a lot. They don't really have a running game. This, this defense is terrible outside of like Chandler Jones and a couple of players. So more often than not, they're going to give up 25 to 30 points per game and need the offense to continue to explode like it has been all right this is an offense that's going to continue to let kyler air it out i mean I'm, I'm dropping decent money on on ronda moore i'm thinking somewhere in like the 20 percent range of your fab 
twenty dollars if you're in a hundred dollar league whatever it is a couple of young wide receivers must add guys are like michael Pittman and jalen waddle they're they're most likely not available on your waiver wire but if they are they would be the next tier of guys that i would be looking to attack at the wide receiver position both guys have banged up Uh, quarterbacks right now so it's tough to throw them into your lineup I like Waddle more than I like Pittman right now with Wentz out but Waddle and Moore are right next to each other I would probably take um, more over Waddle because Will Fuller is likely returning very soon next up on this list of guys that are probably actually attainable Sterling Shepard man right now the wide receiver 11 in fantasy this was a point that I was making a lot during the summer and I was taking him all the time in like the, the 14th 15th 16th round of best ball drafts him and Danny Dimes just have this chemistry man it's shitty chemistry you know it's like 10th grade 10th grade high school level chemistry but it's there right Sterling Shepard has two monster games back to back now Nine targets, seven receptions, 113 yards, and a touchdown in game one. Ten targets, nine receptions, 94 yards in week two. So you're talking about 19 targets, 16 receptions, over 200 receiving yards in the first two games of the season. Again, currently the wide receiver 11 in fantasy, and now they get some beautiful matchups. You get Atlanta, you get the Saints, you get Dallas. I just think he's going to continue to get peppered with targets in an offense that badly needs playmakers. Danny Dimes and uh, Kenny Galladay ain't getting it done right now. Saquon not getting it done right now. Shepard should continue to see seven to 10 targets a game. So I really, really like Sterling Shepard. Next up on this list, I feel like we got to talk about KJ Osborne just because he's kind of blown up over the last couple of weeks, but we have back-to-back big games for Osborne. They're running a ton of three wide receiver sets with Herb Smith out. Um, That probably wasn't going to be the consensus play calling there in Minnesota. It was probably going to be a lot of Tyler Conklin, Irv Smith. But as soon as Irv Smith got put onto the IR, now it's a lot of three wide receiver sets with Jefferson, Thielen, and KJ Osborne. KJ Osborne is a guy that I'm definitely going to be pessimistic about for a long time. A guy that I'm not targeting my waiver wire drafts, but I just feel like we kind of need to touch on him for a few reasons. First, clear third option in the wide receiver pecking group. Justin Jefferson, Adam Thielen, KJ Osborne, fourth on the team. If you add Dalvin Cook into there, this is a historically run first offense. So you're talking about the fourth option on a run first offense. What he did the first two weeks was against two of the worst pass defenses in the NFL. You have Cincinnati and you have Arizona. Uh, And this last week, he broke, uh, there was broken coverage. So he broke free for a long touchdown. If that didn't happen, if there wasn't broken coverage and didn't have an easy 70 yard walk in touchdown, we would not be talking about KJ Osborne as a good waiver wire pickup right now so i don't think that's predict uh, predictive it's it's pretty uh uninspiring desperate pickup in my opinion so osborne if you're in a deeper league and you're desperate go for it he's not a guy that i am targeting or using any fab dollars on i will use a couple of fab dollars on mr tim patrick of the denver broncos however sutton obviously blew up but tim patrick is running uh just as many routes as sutton they both ran 31 routes on sunday uh teddy bridgewater looks fantastic they were the team lead in in routes run on Sunday. Patrick just gets it done, man. Again, he's, he's just Ryan Tim Patrick. He is the the Fitzpatrick of the wide receiver position where anytime he just randomly gets called upon, he gets it done. The guy just scores touchdowns and scores touchdowns and scores touchdowns. All right. So I expect no different against the Jets on Sunday. We love Mr. Tim Patrick. Rondell Moore is the prize jewel of this week for sure. Uh, I would try not to miss out on him if you have any fab remaining okay so ronda moore is the guy that you want and that's going to wrap up this video uh if you enjoyed make sure you hit the thumbs up button make sure you subscribe to the channel if you're new tomorrow will be our trade targets video so obviously subscribe if you want to see that go check out our website bdge.store where you can get the in-depth fab guidance waiver wire all the buzzwords that people talk about it's going to be there rankings will be out thursday i love y'all thank you for hanging out peace